Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Madeline. And today I am going to be discussing on how you're going to make this year your best academic year yet. Now I'm going to be sharing my 10 tips that have helped me go from this to this. You absolutely loved and adored my last video where I was showing how to be a successful college student. So guess what? This is going to be all tips academics. Maybe more applicable to college and university, high school possibly, if your school offers it. Without further ado, let's get those grades up and stop wasting any time. We're in a heat wave right now. It's like almost 100 degrees in LA. Is that it? All right, let's dive into it. Before I dive into this, I do want to mention that I actually have never been a straight A student up until college. I went to a pretty rigorous high school. I'd say it was prestige. Most students knew it as like one of the higher out of the three schools. I went to a high school that had three different schools within it. So like my graduating class is only maybe 130 students. No, maybe like 150 or 60. You could always see like where you were ranked as far as a student through like something called we called a power school. I was usually 129 or like 119 out of like 150. I was never at the tippy top, but honestly, I didn't really care. Let's get into it though. These are going to be your back to school success tips. The first tip that you're going to take, and I call this the big three. The reason why I call it the big three, it's probably because it's the most difficult to obtain and make sustainable to your lifestyle. Big three is discipline, consistency, and patience. Now I'm going to elaborate on all three of these, what I mean by that. I think this is something that you can apply in your everyday life as well, but as far as academic goes, this is so incredibly crucial. You got to be patient, whether that be waiting for a class, waiting to get accepted into a school, working your way to get accepted into that school. So let's say you're not doing so well in your high school career and you really are trying to aim for that 3.0. Obviously, it's not going to happen overnight, honey bun. I hate to break it to you. It's not going to happen overnight. Not doable. Not possible. But it is achievable. You can do so while dedicating the time and effort into doing that. So being patient with whatever it is that you want to do. As well as that, it's also a matter of you being patient in the sense that if you're setting academic goals for yourself, whether that be getting an A in a class, whether that be getting an A on a test in one class, or getting a 3.0, getting A's and B's, whatever it is, it's going to require patience. You're not just going to see it overnight. It's not just going to happen. Truly. We're not Charlie D'Amelio. We don't just blow up on social media overnight. Next thing is going to be consistency. This is something that I lack incredibly. As many of you guys know, I have never been consistent. I haven't been consistent for years. Anybody that is able to post or do whatever it is every single day consecutively is amazing because I can't do it. Now, obviously with consistency, you need to make sustainable goals. So if your goal is to, let's say the next day, I'm going to go on a diet. I'm going to stop eating junk food. I'm going to stop eating this. You can't just do it overnight. You're going to have to do it little bits and bits every day, little by little. And then you'll eventually achieve that goal. Again, rubbing that in with patience. Again, it requires a lot of waiting. It's a waiting game, right? So being consistent in whatever you're doing, whether that's doing your homework every night, whether that's going to office hours once a week, whether that's emailing your professor when you need help, whatever that looks like to you, make it consistent. Getting eight hours of sleep, th eating three meals a day, drinking more water, making time for yourself, whatever it is. But for academic purposes, whatever your academic goals that you're setting, stay consistent with it. Stay consistent so that way you know that you can succeed in it. Discipline is one of the most difficult things that I struggle with and I think majority people do because a lot of the times I don't think it's you have to be good at school it's you you got to learn discipline I have never been good at school I don't claim to be good at school not even now and I'm a straight A student it's hard it is so incredibly hard and one of the biggest things that I've realized is when you have other factors in your life that you can't always control like whether that be emotionally your mental health relationships friendships at home environment work environment toxic work environments those are all factors contributing into your everyday life you might not always be able to be okay. The key word with discipline is being like, okay, I know that I have homework. When I get home, I have to do it. I got to chisel away at it. Okay. Or whether that be, I didn't eat breakfast. I got to eat lunch and I got to eat a bigger meal. Something that's going to fuel my body, which we're going to get into. Maybe it's, you have a habit of getting papers from your course, just shoving it in your backpack so that way you can get to your next class. Don't do that because a lot of the times you're going to end up needing it. And if you really feel like you're going to end up losing that paper, take a picture. We live in a generation where we have phones with cameras that say, it to our photos truly just do that so that way if you do lose the paper it gets scrunched up it gets stained it gets lost for whatever reason you don't lose it but discipline yourself eight hours of sleep three meals a day drinking water putting your homework away chiseling away on your homework whatever this looks like to you 
which leads me to my second thing I don't think I can express this enough when I say chisel away I really mean chisel away I'm somebody who is a procrastinator this goes with don't procrastinate I mentioned this in my last video it is really really easy to get distracted it's really really hard to stay focused there are moments where I'm editing or I'm posting content and I'm feeling good I'm being consistent and then I procrastinate and then it just becomes inconsistent and I'm not disciplining myself if you're somebody where you know you are somebody that likes to do likes to do homework assignments the night before it's due you're like chilling at home Sunday night it's like 10 59 you're like yeah I'm gonna scroll I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos I'm gonna watch a movie right are you getting ready for bed do a little self-care and then you think oh crap it's 10 59 in one hour I have a whole paper due now why would you do that truly and most honestly I've been there I've done that and trust me I have turned in half ass work and then I get pissed at the teacher and the professor for not giving us more time they could give me a whole month and I'm still gonna do it the night before let's be real let's be real now for those of you who can pull a five page but like essay out your butt congratulations but I know that causes you stress too that has to be like you're watching the time it's a countdown it's timed an example of this my stats professor has assigned 400 problems those of you who have taken stats know that it's like if math and English had a baby it's on crack it's math on crack that's what I call it it is one of the most difficult classes I've ever taken I love math don't like English I suck at word problems, but I'm really good at science and math. This class has already kicked my butt. You've got to be able to start working with yourself than against yourself. So chiseling away is going to be your best friend. To that extent, I actually didn't start my math homework until maybe like a week ago. I've been in the class for two weeks. I had been focusing on studying and making my notes perfect, which hold on because we're going to get there. There are 400 problems and there are 30 days in a month, 30, 31. Realistically, I, I am not going to touch my math homework every day. I'm just not. Would you? 400 divided by 30, that'd be 13 problems a day. Realistically, Realistically, I'm not gonna do that again with making the big three possible the consistency factor You need to make your academic goals You got to make your academic goals and any other goals that you have in your life sustainable I'm not gonna be doing 13 math problems every day. I'm really not I had to break it down to two days a week. There are seven days in a week Yes, but I am taking other classes I'm not only gonna be dedicating it to one class even though I really should which I probably will but not to homework It's very lengthy and time-consuming one problem can take me three hours another problem could take me maybe a minute So with that being said I'm not always going to be doing my math problems every day. It's not sustainable. However, I what I could do is I can be realistic and say, hmm, could I dedicate two days out of my week? Yeah. If I'm already at school and I've already learned it, it's fresh in my mind, it's marinating, I could possibly do my math homework two days a week. So then I multiply that into the five weeks of September, div divided by the 400, and that's what I'm going to be doing. And I've actually been pretty good with it. I've been staying consistent. Again, sustainability. That's what we're looking for so that we don't lead into that, oh, I'll do it later. Don't postpone. With chiseling away, don't allow yourself to postpone your assignments truly don't even if it's a paper start laying it out create a rough job at least already have a Google Doc or a Word Doc available with your name the professor and the date at least a title so that way you feel like you're doing something I don't care what it is make it simple write your name on it put the date start touching that paper so that way it looks familiar so I have a bad habit of I would get assigned a paper a homework assignment whatever it is and I would not look at the assignment itself and think oh yeah I can I can be yes that real quick I will pull it up and start asking my friends like how am I supposed to do this I remember doing this in high school I would literally text everybody you're gonna be struggling you're gonna be stressed truly so again chisel away at your assignments little by little you don't have to get all of it done just little by little especially if you have a short attention span just do it This is something that I struggled with my freshman year of college and sometimes still do today. Use your resources. This can be going to the library, attending office hours, asking questions in class, getting extra practice work, using YouTube for crying out loud, Khan Academy, ask questions use your resources i'm in a stats class i probably use this multiple times in this video i don't care i'll keep using it we have to use a ti-83 calculator maybe some of us have used the classic scientific calculator no not in stats this is what it looks like covering my school this little guy requires a lot of batteries so this is oh sorry ti-84 plus so this is the calculator that i have to use for stats it actually shows me graphs standard deviation range median um, lower class width equations like so etc guess how much this goes for just a lot of money a lot of money that's all we're gonna say um yeah i don't have money right now to invest in this but guess what first day of class my professor said hey you can rent a calculator for the semester you have to see what's available it's a first come first serve basis guess what he had a couple extra of these bad boys I participated in class and guess how much I ended up spending on using this calculator zero dollars again 
using my resources. Very thoughtful, very mindful, very what? Demure. Shout out to my school for making it possible because $200 is not it, honey. $200 is not it. I got $4.30 in my bank account right now sitting there till I get paid. Something that I used to lack is asking stupid questions. No such thing as a stupid question, truly. And I ask a lot of stupid questions. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, you could ask anybody. They'll tell you, yep, <laughs> besides the point. Um, we're not talking about me. We're not coming for me. We're talking about you. Yeah. Um... Anyways, struggled for the longest time using my resources. I would never ask the teachers questions. I wouldn't even go to a counselor. Oh, that reminds me of another thing. If you have a question about what school, what major, what classes you need to take when you're in college, please go to the Welcome Center or go to wherever it is, admissions, um, wherever they have a counseling service building, ask questions. Stop being shy, stop being scared, go out there use your resources. Stay after office hours. Most professors either have their office have their office hours either on the day of lecture, before or after class. Sometimes they have it on opposite days if they have more sections. In class, if you're too shy to raise your hand during class because you don't want to say something stupid or you need something to be repeated, just raise your hand doing individual work or go to your class like 10 minutes earlier and just ask your professor, hey, I had a question about this the other day. Email them. They put it out there for a reason. Use tutoring services. We have a math department that allows free tutoring. I don't have to pay again free so guess what that's what you got to do start using your resources moving on to number four i recently actually started doing this so this is a new one and i've seen this become more of a trend take pride in your notes mm -hmm. i felt like this is pretty i felt like this is debatable because sometimes people can just absorb knowledge if you're one of those people you shouldn't be watching this video then because you probably already have ace not judging not judging um but if you're able to observe knowledge you don't need to watch this video if you want to watch this video feel free to do so and hit that subscribe button at the bottom a lot of times and actually being in my math class my professor did mention how only three percent of students that take pictures from lecture and how sometimes we'll take out our handy dandy phone and we'll be like oh yeah i'm gonna take a picture of this and this on the whiteboard and we never look at it let's be honest how many of us have taken a picture in a class of a presentation of a lecture of a powerpoint whatever it is but we haven't even looked at it we just listen some people are able to do that yeah no not me i have never looked back at my notes i have never looked back at the images i took a picture of and mainly because i didn't care enough that's that's why i was in the predicament that i was in wds f's and no passes but not anymore though i'm excited about taking notes i think i have finally found a good sustainable foundation i'll actually link it down below of a document of what my google notes look like from one of my classes actually previous classes before too i do the classic cornell notes notes i have the cornell notes again google docs it's free we're not spending any money if you do have canva and you pay for it i recommend using that too for math i use whiteboard i will say though for canva because they have that option it's probably more beneficial if you have like a tablet i don't know i would recommend using canva if you have a tablet or an ipad of some sort google doc is really great for anybody that has a laptop doesn't matter what kind of laptop you have google doc is free because you have google i'm pretty sure you have an account again making your school organized create a folder for your class only that and then create another folder for your semester only that so you're keeping everything nice and organized and you're not having to click through what is chapter one chapter one oh no this is for history oh no this is for art and etc the cornell notes i think is more sustainable and easy because you can customize it to you and if you're interested in what fonts and colors i use i can absolutely do a tutorial on that as well because i recently started doing this one thing that i can do and i feel like you know most people can when i'm typing i don't have to look at the keyboard i already know what i'm pressing and i don't have to like look forward and look back look forward and look back i can just do it all really quickly my professor moves pretty quickly in lecture i think most professors do so you really want to be able to pick up the pace and just go Brrr. and that's usually why people have the tendency of taking a picture of whatever it is in class and then so on even if you feel like you don't have time dedicate that outside try your best to keep it sustainable it is pretty difficult especially if they're moving quickly so don't do too much keep it minimal bold highlight change colors capitalize that's it don't be adding too much later on if you would like if you have time and you feel like you can do it add more to it i actually ended up taking math problems and i would use that on canva obviously when i was outside of class you have to make time for that which is going to lead into time management which i actually won't be mentioning in my video but it's a problem it's another thing that i would recommend <laughs> on to the next thing take mental check breaks what i mean by this is if you're somebody that gets easily distracted you've got a lot going on sometimes people are going through things really rough workplaces toxic environments jobs friendships relationships whatever it may be past traumas we carry a lot of baggage you know um and if you're somebody that's going back to college after years i'm 20 i have been going through this up and down all of 
my late teen, early 20s, up and down all the time. So taking those little mental check breaks, like, am I good? Am I good? Hey, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. I'm going to stop doing my work for right now. And I'm going to do something for me. I'm going to take a drive. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to meet up with my friend. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to eat a good meal and watch a show and not feel guilty about it. I feel like with the mental check, break will get confused with like meditation which is i am going to mention that but that's not what i'm referring to remember you got to think about yourself at the end of the day all about that keeping your mental your physical well first off keeping your mental health balance key ingredient so whatever it is do something for yourself check on yourself write do calligraphy go running go walking go swimming eat something good hang out with friends get ice cream doesn't matter what you're going through doesn't matter what decisions that you've made in your life don't pit yourself for not being able to enjoy things. You deserve that. Trust me, especially with things that go on in our everyday life, it's easy to get caught up and start feeling down and depressed and really just feel like, I can't do this. I don't feel good enough. And then we get into this really low area. The only thing I say, and I say this with caution, of course, mental check breaks. Please, please, please never shut yourself out. That's why I say check on yourself. I mean, you're your biggest enemy. You're your biggest op. Um, I'm, I am my biggest enemy. I will put myself down every time. Mental check breaks. Gotta put it first. <laughs> Moving on to the next thing. Good academic habits. Right, so I feel like vision boards are really trendy towards the end slash beginning of the year. It's one of those annual things, but at the end of the day too, you gotta do it for yourself. Vision boards are meant to be made in the sole purpose so it's sustainable. That's one of the biggest things that I think people don't realize and you can have big and little goals. Maybe your big goal is to move out to New York and have a really nice love. Girl, put that down. Hashtag live your gossip girl era. We love it. Um, but also put small goals like getting a sustainable job, right? So how are we going to achieve that goal? Put as many goals as you can. Don't just have one big goal. Of course, you can have that be the biggest, but put smaller goals as well that are more sustainable and attainable to achieve. Um, that's something that I would struggle with and then I'd get pissed. I just stopped doing it at one point. Now, vision boards for your academics could look very different from mine. I struggle with history. My academic goals are different from yours. So maybe yours is just to pass in your math class that you've been failing for the past three semesters. You want to get a C. Just get a 70%. Make that your goal. Maybe it's you want to start eating more. Put that in there. You're creating vision boards as you would for your lifestyle, but including it only for your academics. Lay out all of your academic goals. The vision boards should be made more monthly than anything else and I think yearly because it would push you so you can look back and be like, oh, did I achieve this? Yes, I did. Oh, did I pass this class? Yes, I did. Did I do my homework every day? Yes, I did. Did I chisel away? Yes, I did. Did I get eight hours of sleep? Yes, I did. Did I drink water? Yes, I did. Creating more sustainable, attainable goals when it comes to your vision board as well, but making it only solely for your academics. Next thing is so crucial, fuel your body and your mind, especially your body. We can't do anything, we can't work, we can't go to school, we can't learn if we're not fueling our body. Our body is like a car. If we're not providing it with the necessity needs, guess what? And maintenance, we require maintenance too. We require hydration, we require food. If you don't provide your body with enough fuel, it's not okay. Now, when I say fuel your body, I'm saying fuel your body with, I'm talking about, I'm talking three meals a day, two snacks and drinking water. Now, believe me, it's hard. I've been struggling with it myself, but I feel so much better. I suffer from severe, severe migraines. I have learned that not eating and not sleeping take a really big role. That also has a role with weight gain, which I have openly shared about my health journey, and I'm more than happy to open it even more. This could look like getting eight hours of sleep, drinking enough water, drinking enough water within the day. People have flasks, and I know you have a Stanley or Hydro or just a regular water bottle that holds water. You probably have something. Start staying hydrated. Try to stray away from eating short meals, snacks, vending machines, iced coffees for three meals a day. I know we're in college. I know we're in high school. I know we're staying up all night. So it's really easy to get caught up in iced coffee, Red Bulls, Monsters. You can still have those, but what I'm saying is don't live off them. Don't live off them. Still get yourself something good. Don't feel guilty too. If you are, like I go to a school where it's near this really like popular pizza place. If I'm hungry, guess what? A slice of pizza is going to fill my body versus a cup of iced coffee. Your girl loves coffee. I do. I could drink three cups. Is that healthy? No. But if I'm eating a pizza and I treat it as a meal, that's good. Making small snacks, maybe it's carrots and ranch, broccoli, celery, or maybe it's um, the little pretzels, whatever it is, fuel your body with good stuff. I'm telling you, there are easy meals to just make that are simple that you can still eat, finger foods, and you can still have your hot Cheetos. Guess what? You can still eat your gym food. <laughs> 
Another thing is meditation breaks. The reason why I mentioned meditation is because I think it's so crucial to being able... Um, I used to think meditation and breathings were really dumb until I took my last math class. My professor always made us do a breathing break before every break and before every assignment. Like every time we were transitioning from lecture to classwork, he was always making us do breathing breaks and it made the biggest difference. Or in the morning when you wake up, you already feel stressed. You have that presentation, you have that quiz, you have that test, you have that application due, you got that interview. Or even before bed, it doesn't take very long you don't have to do 20 minutes you don't even have to do 12 you could just do three and out in and out just three times and that would be enough with that being said that is going to conclude today's video i actually am going to elaborate a lot more in my actual podcast episode so if you are interested in learning 20 tips and you have the time or you just want to listen to background noise guess what again that is at a mad life podcast of course you can find me on spotify google podcast youtube um any streaming platform alexa apple podcast you can find it. With that being said, I am wishing all of you the best academic year possible. I'm not going to wish you luck because I know you're going to succeed, especially if you watched the entirety of this video, if you did it in a school. But I do hope that everybody has an incredible academic year. Have a great school year if you haven't started. If you have started, if you're needing this to be your sign to go back and finish school, please do so. Don't feel embarrassed. It doesn't matter where you are in life. Nobody really cares. Most of the people, no, nine times out of ten, the people that go there generally just end up going back home. They're going there for one reason and that's it. Nobody cares. Nobody's looking at you. We got our own business going on. Have a great school year. I will see you guys next time. And let me know if you have any more questions. And of course, if you like this video, I can make more. Let let me know if you'd like a tutorial on how I do my notes or how I create my sustainable schedule and I'm more than happy in sharing it. I'm excited because you're not failing this semester. You're not failing any classes. If you got any D's and F's, you could say goodbye because that was last year. I will see you guys next time and I'm sending all my love to you. Bye!